God, and I love God very much. So I thought, okay, what I need to do to solve my issue is to ground myself in religion again. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get closer to God, but at that time in a Christian way. Mm -hmm. But in Malaysia, it was difficult for me to find a church that I felt comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I was still the same. You know, if I didn't feel comfortable in the church, I wouldn't go, but I would have my quiet time with God. So I didn't find a church that I was comfortable with here. Um, not saying that the churches here are not good, it's just my own personal feeling. I wasn't comfortable. So I did with what I usually do again. I went and bought a stack of books. You know, I wanted to learn, I was, okay, I'm going to teach myself Christian history, and then I'm going to teach myself Christian theology, I'm going to read lots of books. Because remember, I was a student, you know, I really enjoyed, I could have been a professional student if that was a job. I liked studying. And so, researching. And researching. Uh -huh. So, um, but along the way, I hope everyone can understand, I'm so sorry that I can't speak VM. Just bear with me. You know, maybe one day I'll learn, but for now, you know, just bear with me. And hopefully, maybe there'll be translation somewhere. Maybe the friend to your side will translate a bit. But, um, so I, I was reading all these books, and you know, the, the Christian history was not so appealing to me. I mean, a lot of things I understood, but just the way that Christianity spread in Europe, especially, it wasn't so appealing to me. All of the battles and all of the wars, it wasn't appealing to me. So I said, okay, I'll put the history aside. Let me look at, at some of the theology. So I was looking at some of the theology, and, and I did have some questions that I, I didn't have answers to, you know, in the theology. But at that time, I had a good friend who had said, you know, Islam is from the same roots as Christianity. Have you ever looked into Islam? You should come to my class. I said, no, I have not. But I have no, I have no feelings towards Islam, whether good or bad, neutral. Because um, my father is someone who participated in um, religious talks before. So whenever he met Muslims or Jews, I would ask him, so I asked everybody, is everyone okay? So he would say, yeah, everyone's fine. Everyone prayed in their own way. Everyone's friends is fine. So in my heart and in my mind, I always thought everyone is fine. All religions are fine. All people are fine. So I have no prejudice. Yeah, so I said, okay. So my friend is inviting me. I like my friend. Good manners, you know, everything. So I thought, okay, let's go and look what this class about. And I went and I was very impressed. I was very impressed at what um, the imam or the ustaz was saying. You know, things about how to treat your, um, you know, your fellow uh, humans. No. Not just Muslims, but your brothers and sisters in humanity. How to live your life well. I like the structure. The structure is very different from Christianity. And, and I, I, I like that. I'm someone who likes structure. So I caught on to that. Okay, there's steps that you can take. There's rules that you can, you know, that can guide your life. I'm not out there just kind of like, waddling along by myself, kind of trying to find something. There's actually something out there that I can follow. You know, I I don't know about you, but for me, I need something to follow. You know, and your life is so huge, the world is so huge, how do you find your way? It's hard. So when there's some guide, that's very comforting. Mm -hmm. So it's guidance that you are seeking for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan bagaimana uh, dia mendekati, menjumpai Islam dengan cara mengkaji lebih mendalam tentang Kristian sebenarnya ya, dengan uh, membeli buku-buku dan lebih banyak dia mengkaji tentang Kristian jadi dia menjumpai Islam sebenarnya. Okay, uh, so how long did it take for you uh, from the moment you did your research on Christianity and uh, you attended the religious classes? So how long did it take for you? Well, um, if, if we're talking about just that bit with the research and the reading, it was about four months. Okay. Four months, it, which seems very short, mm -hmm. but actually I feel like my journey began when I was born. You know, because at the end of those four months, I felt like I was a Muslim my whole life. I just didn't know what it was called. Because I had always loved God so much, you know, and, and I had always had these values in me. I feel like God has been, or Allah has been protecting me through my whole life. For example, very small example, the way that I dress. You know, growing up, I wasn't, you know, I, I was in America, of course, but I, why was I born to Thai parents? And why was my mother a Thai etiquette teacher? My mother actually always encouraged me to go outside the house fully covered to the wrist and all the way to the ankles. So it wasn't like I was short sleeves and, you know, short pants all the time. No, 
it was I was covered everywhere I was soaked. And I always wore a hat too. So it's like, wait a minute. It's almost the same, just looser and bigger. <laughs> you know? So it's like little things like that that I see along my life that actually help me through my transition. Yes. So when I actually did my four months of reading even, and another thing, why was I born into a religious Christian family where I knew all of the Old Testament very well? You know, so when I was reading the stories of the prophets, mm -hmm. it was easy for me to grasp because I knew them anyway. But the Muslims have a bit more detail. So I was like, oh, this is cool. All right, I got some more detail here. So I was literally feeling like I was stopped in. You know, you read a little bit. It's like, oh, this is good. Let me read a little bit more. Oh, this is more good. Let me read a little bit. So it's like, woof, woof. You know, it's like, you know, really sucking me in. Uh -huh. So, and everything that I read, I literally, you know, grasped so easily and I accepted so easily. I was like, okay, that makes sense, done. This makes sense, done. So everything was like, check, 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 check. There was no, like, big sign marks, you know? A little bit with Prophet Isa, Jesus, uh -huh. and a bit with Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, just because the way that the Muslims view these two particular prophets is a little bit different. You know, but once I thought to myself, if Allah wants to do something, he can do anything he wants, right? He can make a baby talk. Fine. Prophet Isa is done. The baby can talk. It's okay. If Allah wants to send another prophet, can he do that? Yes. Alright. Allah can do whatever he wants. So once that mindset was switched, maybe it wasn't in my heart at first, but my, my brain was switched, I could keep on going. So at the end of four months, I literally felt like I've been Muslim my whole life. Right, okay. So you can relate from your research, uh, from the book research that you did uh, with your lifestyle. I mean, uh, throughout your life, uh, what you've been through, it's like according to the book, to what the religious book says, right? Okay. And uh, so when you have questions, um, when you read the books, so who do you refer to? Who did you refer to? Well, um, I did have, I always go regularly to some Islamic classes on the weekend. So, so this is in America? No, no, this is here. This oh, is in Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay. It was in Malaysia. So I would actually go to my class and, you know, after a week of reading, I would have a page of questions. I so when I, I would actually stand around until the Ustas was done with all the questions from everyone else. And I literally sat with the Ustas from around, you know, after Zohar uh -huh. until 5 p.m. Okay. every single Sunday. Right. I did that for a few months. Okay. So I got all of my answers. But they weren't, they weren't fundamental, huge questions. It was just more, because I remember I, I have accepted most of theology already. I accepted everything so easily, but it was more like, can I really do this? What does a Muslim do, lady do every day? Mm. You know, is it really so different or is it kind of the same? You know, when, when, when I was, I didn't know I was ready, but when, when I was just about ready, I, I had actually uh, made a request to meet some Muslim ladies and I wanted to follow them. I wanted to know when you wake up, what do you do? During the day, what do you do? <laughs> it's not like you're an alien or anything, you know, but I just want to know, is it like the same or not? You know, when you pray, what do you do when you pray? And how do you schedule that, you know? Because, you know, five times a day at that time, I thought, like, wow, that's, that's, that's very disrupting to my life. But now it's like, I can't wait to pray. Uh -huh. You know, but at that time, I was like, how do you, how do you time manage that? I don't get it. <laughs> I wanted to follow somebody. Okay. Uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan bagaimana uh, dia uh, mengambil masa selama 4 bulan untuk mengkaji uh, dengan buku-buku buku-buku uh, uh, agama dan uh, bila ada yang tak faham uh, akan ada satu helai penuh soalan-soalan yang akan ditanya pada ustaz uh, ustaz kelas yang dihadiri oleh Aliza eh. Okey jadi begitulah cara Aliza mendalami uh, agama Islam. Okey. Um, so when you decided that that's the moment, this is the moment that uh, I'm going to revert to Islam. So what did you do? Who, do you, who did you refer to? Is it the state of Ustaz in your religious class? Or? Um, uh, there are two Ustaz. This is one of them, yes. Um, this one actually was American. Um, he's lecturing in, in Malaysia, but he's from California. So it's easy for me to talk to him. We have the, you know, the same lingo as you. <laughs> So, um, so he, he, I, I wanted a Quran actually. I asked him, can you please just give me an easy American English Quran or translation of the Quran so it's not this the, that, how, old English that I oh, completely yeah. don't get. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, can you just give me a simple translation of the Quran that I can read and then I can understand. So I said, okay, let me go inside. And he brought out a little one for me. 
So you can just keep this in your bag. But do you have any questions? Actually, at that time, I had no questions. But I thought, well, he's so nice to, you know, offer me his time. I might as well just sit and maybe, you know, just ask him some questions. Yeah. I'll be inspired to ask something. So I said, okay, yes. No, I don't, I don't really have But I'll just say yes, I have questions. <laughs> so we sat, and he actually started asking me questions as I had hoped, you know. How much have you read? What do you know? And after I explained, he was like, wait, you know quite a lot already. And I was like, some, I've been reading quite a bit, you know. But because he's seen me in class, so he, he knows kind of my personality, that I'm very much a perfectionist. I need to know everything. I, I want to be, you know, good at whatever I'm about to do. I want to make an informed decision, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I have what I call revert syndrome. Okay. okay. Revert syndrome is when you're so excited, but you want to be perfect. You want to have perfect arrogance, and you want to so much so perfectly, and you want to do everything so perfectly right from the first day. Because you know that you're you're clean. You don't want to start tarnishing yourself right from the very second that you you know step out of the mosque or the Islamic learning center. So I was in this mindset. I'm going to learn Arabic first, and I'm going to learn how to so lot first, and I'm going to do all these things first. And him being very American and knowing that I'm American, he's like, you better not die tomorrow. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? But this is very American style. So he's very American. So you better not die tomorrow because then Allah will ask you, you have all this knowledge, how come you didn't revert? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But, um, you know, there were other statements like, you know, Lisa, you love to read so much. You like to research so much. And you feel like you need to have so much knowledge. But how long is it going to take you? Is it going to take you 10 years, 15 years? And this is the statement that made me cry. Because I'm a perfectionist. He said, you know that the level of knowledge that you want, Eliza, you can only have once you declare yourself at really submit yourself because Allah will only give a certain level of knowledge to people who submit themselves. And in my perfectionist head, I was like, oh no. You mean if I read everything and I'm fluent in Arabic and everything, I'm not going to have that level in my heart? Oh, that was bad for me. I mean, I don't know how that sounds to you, but that was bad for me. (laughs) Because you you wanted everything to be perfect. I wanted everything to be perfect and I wanted to have perfect Understanding, but at that moment I knew I was like, you know what? He's so right. How arrogant am I? I think that I'm gonna know everything right away. You know, it, it takes time. People are born with us; they're still learning. Well, who am I? Yes, so I thought, okay, he's right. It's true. I better not die tomorrow. I'm not gonna be perfect. I'll just accept it. <laughs> so, so it was really much at that moment that he kind of like he. The, the ustaz was very good, you know, he was like, okay, she's crying, she kind of gets it now. Why don't I just ask now? So I had some friends around me, and I, I was feeling like, you know what, I, I felt most of my whole life. It's just this little little bit. I mean, I can, I can handle not being perfect yet and just work really hard after. So I said yes, and uh, after that, the whole room was crying by then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Such an emotional moment, yeah? <laughs> So this side was crying and this side was sniffling and I, I, I was, I had my first attempts of wearing hijab at that time so I pulled this side from where I pulled this side, I could only see the assassin, otherwise I would just, you know, <laughs> I would just weep into like a crying mess. But I took my shahada at that moment, still a little bit unsure that I believed in Allah, sure that I've been a Muslim my whole life. But still, you know, have those insecurities of a perfectionist, but still okay. Okay, jadi uh, Aliza menceritakan uh, detik-detik bagaimana uh, dia memeluk Islam iaitu berlaku di dalam kelas agama yang disertainya di mana uh, bila ustaz yang mengajar bertanya uh, mungkinkah ini masanya untuk Aliza memeluk Islam dan Aliza uh, rasa tak bersedia lagi kerana pada Aliza dia perlu menjadi sempurna dari segi mempelajari bahasa Arab, dari segi uh, menghantam Al-Quran mempelajari seluruh cara hidup Islam okay? Uh, jadi ustaz kata itu tidak akan berlaku kerana Islam ini pengajaran uh, kita perlu belajar sepanjang hayat hingga ke akhir hayat baru tidak akan sempurna maknanya perlu sentiasa memperbaiki diri okey 
Jadi bila Aliza dengar uh, penerangan dari Ustaz berkenaan uh, perlunya sentiasa belajar tentang Islam sepanjang hayat setelah memeluk Islam dan tidak boleh perfect sebelum uh, uh, memeluk agama Islam uh, maka Aliza pun menangis dan uh, terasa begitu humble, eh, terasa begitu rendah diri uh, dan dia rasa selama ni dia uh, rasa mungkin bongkak kerana dia rasa perlu jadi pandai uh, sebelum dapat memeluk Islam jadi uh, apa yang diberitahu oleh Ustaz itu memberi satu macam tamparan lah pada Aliza eh. so, uh, dan dia menjadi rasa rendah diri dan dia menangis di dalam kelas Ustaz dan di waktu itu seluruh kelas agama itu juga menangis dan uh, di waktu itu juga lah uh, Aliza menyatakan syahadahnya dan memeluk Islam Alhamdulillah Okay. And so, uh, when you've reverted to Islam, who did you inform first? Your family, your friends, or...? Actually, nobody. Okay. Because, uh, you know what, at, at that time, one of my concerns was still my parents. Because they're very much religious people, they're religious Christians. But, you know, uh, um, and, and that was a big concern of mine. And I, and I did mention that to the Ustaz. But he said, you know what, Elisa, you can take your time. Just because you revert to today doesn't mean that you have to tell today. You take your time because for me, my parents are so special and so important to me that I don't want to shock them and break their heart. You know, and, and I was afraid to break their heart. So I actually took time, um, changed myself first because sometimes it's better to look within first. You know, it's better to change yourself first before you start trying to tell other people other things. Yeah. So I looked inside, I changed my heart, changed my thinking, changed the way I dress, got myself comfortable first, and I started giving my parents little bits of information. You know, my, my friends here, of course, they will witness my you know, evolution. <laughs> so I don't really have to say much of like, what's going on, and I can just tell them. But my parents, I, I would give them little bits of information, mostly through my father. Because my father would just tell my, my mother that was easier. You know? <laughs> so, um, so every time he came, I would give him a little bit more information. And um, there was one time that I did take him to see um, my main ustaz, and they had a nice talk. And um, I, I knew that my dad might, I didn't know how he would react actually, but I knew that he might be a little bit emotional, whether good or bad, mm -hmm. emotional. So. Um, I actually, and this is a tip, maybe it's a tip, okay? So once, once I actually told him a little bit, or halfway, I didn't tell him I reverted yet, but I told him I'm studying Islam seriously. And already he was a little bit, mm. but um, I did what I thought would be right as a daughter. I took him on a date. I took him on a father-daughter date to Malacca, which he loved. So I just wanted to show him, you know, even though I'm interested in something that makes me a little bit different than him, you know, I'm still his daughter. You know, I'm still the little girl that he, he, you know, raised. I still love him for who he is, and I still hope that he will love me for who I am. So the date idea went perfectly. Success. So um, he came back, and we were very happy, and, you know, he was chit-chatting with me. Everything was fine. So, and then time passed. So I thought, okay, I better just let him, you know, feel whatever he needs to feel, think whatever he needs to think. And he did, and, you know, for one full year, every single salat, I made dua that Allah will soften his heart and my mother's heart to, they don't have to accept Islam yet, <laughs> but inshallah that they will just accept me as a Muslim daughter and they will just, you know, love me still. And you know, the most amazing thing happened um, just this past December that you know, I decided to really tell my dad. I actually reverted last January, so it took me completely one year, uh -huh. December, that um, I told him that I finally, you know, reverted. But I didn't actually say much. I said, Dad, I think I better update you on me and Islam. And at that point, he said, stop, daughter. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> but he said, stop. And then he talked for 30 minutes by himself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, the, the gist of the conversation was don't worry, I'm accepted, don't worry about me, don't worry about our family, don't worry about my friends. If you think this gives you more hope, if you think this gives you more peace, then go ahead. It's okay. He was the most lovely, wonderful, cute, whatever good word person that day. He was just so wonderful. 
so humble. I thought he was going to be the hardest person, right? The hardest person. He was very religious, but he was the easiest. And he said to me, you know, I'm a religious person. He, he said, I'm a religious person. I'm a scholar. My friends are scholars. We scholars, we know that religion you can't force. And religion has a purpose. So if this does that purpose for you, then go. He was just beautiful. He was wonderful. My dad is just a special man. Well, to me. <laughs> and what about your mom? Mom, dad handled. Okay. So um, <laughs> he went to visit her, actually. And, and I was waiting for her to ask me something. So I was waiting for the clues, whether he said something or not, and the clues didn't come. So finally, maybe my third phone call to them when he was there. I was like, Dad, so did you tell her anything? He was like, yeah, I told her everything, it's fine. I was like, what? That's it? It's easy? Yeah, he was like, it's fine. We understand. We're happy for you, it's fine. I was like, oh, well, all right then, that's it. So that was that, but I mean, after that, mom did ask a few questions. I mean, mothers being mothers, you know, fathers being men, they kind of ask two or three questions and they're okay. But then the mother starts and she starts asking maybe ten. <laughs> you know? So some of the first ones she asked me was, um, you know, Lisa, are you, are you covering your head and your whole face and you're wearing all black or not? <laughs> and I said, no, mom, it's okay. Yesterday I wore purple, today I'm wearing green, everything's okay, you can see my face. You're it's still okay. Colorful. Yeah, I'm, I still look just fine. It's okay. <laughs> and so my, my friend actually suggested maybe I should send some photos to her. I think that's a good idea. Send some photos to her. And then she asked me, what? What is that song that they always play five times a day? It's so loud, you know. <laughs> She's so cute, right? <laughs> so I said, well, you know, mom, it's not really a song. You know, what what it actually means is it's calling people to pray to God. And she was like, oh, really? It's just reminding people in a nice way. It's time to pray to God and to praise God. And she's like, oh, well, if that's what it means, more people should know what it means then. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's right. And that was the end of that phone call. But I mean, it's, mom is very sweet as well. She, she doesn't know when she knows she's a success. They, my parents are just very cute. <laughs> Okey, uh, jadi uh, Aliza menceritakan detik bagaimana ya, dia nak berkongsi dengan uh, ibu bapa dia uh, bagaimana uh, yang dia telah memeluk agama Islam. Uh, jadi dia membawa ayah dia uh, berdua dengan ayah dia pergi ke Melaka, uh, spend masa uh, dengan ayah, jalan-jalan, uh, makan dan sebagainya. Uh, tapi belum beritahu lagi, cuma bagi tahu yang dia dah mula meng, uh, belajar tentang Islam, uh, asas-asas Islam. Jadi penerimaan ayah dia pada waktu itu uh, terdiam sekejap uh, dan bercakap uh, mengenai hal lain selama 30 minit setengah jam uh, sebab cuba nak terima apa yang cuba disampaikan oleh anak dia ya, sebab uh, anak dia dah belajar tentang Islam sebab ayah dia ialah seorang penganut Kristian yang kuat. Okay. Jadi uh, jadi itu uh, cerita di Melaka. Jadi di Melaka ayahnya punya maklumat ialah anak dia sudah mula belajar tentang Islam. Padahal di waktu itu Aliza telah pun memeluk Islam. Kemudian uh, Aliza mengambil masa setahun dia telah memeluk Islam pada bulan Januari dan akhirnya Aliza mempunyai kekuatan pada bulan Disember untuk telefon ayah dia dan bagi tahu dia sebenarnya telah memeluk Islam. Uh, Aliza begitu berdebar bagaimana reaksi ay uh, si ayah tapi alhamdulillah uh, ayah dia dengan tenang uh, kata asalkan anak dia tenang dan gembira dengan agama baru dengan cara hidup yang baru ayah dia Reda lah kot, ya? ayah dia uh, gembira juga Dan kemudian Aliza menyerahkan tugas untuk memberitahu kepada emak dia uh, Melalui ayah dia uh, Aliza tak bagi tahu sendirilah dengan emak dia Jadi ayahnya pula uh, telefon uh, emak dia untuk bagi tahu. Dan Aliza menunggu di sini bagaimana respon daripada si emak Tapi tak ada respon, tak ada uh, telefon ke apa Jadi Aliza tanya ayah dia, dah bagi tahu emak ke belum? Kemudian uh, ayah dia kata dah, semua okey Kan? Jadi uh, penantian Aliza untuk memberitahu berita besar yang dia telah memeluk Islam selama 12 bulan tu berbaloi lah Sebab uh, respon daripada ibu dia pun uh, gembira uh, dengan uh, agama baru yang dianuti oleh uh, Aliza Dan ibunya bertanya soalan-soalan basic tentang azan yang didengar sebanyak lima kali Dia tanya lagu apa tu uh, yang panggil orang lima kali kan So Aliza kata itu azan uh, call for prayers untuk um, mengajak kita mengerjakan solat dan sebagainya dan uh, dia tanya Aliza pakai serba hitam uh, pakai tutup muka 
kan mak dia tanya kerisauan seorang ibu terhadap anak eh, sebab dia tak tahu tentang Islam jadi Aliza terangkanlah dia masih colourful masih uh, pakai warna ungu warna hijau dan sebagainya so itu kisah ya eh, bagaimana Aliza menyampaikan uh, berita uh, tips selamat ya kepada kedua ibu bapa okay. um, so is there anything that you're worried about uh, when you have reverted to Islam any uh, you know things that you think that will be like a big challenge for you Before I answer that, I have to thank you first for doing such a great job translating because I know that I talk a lot. <laughs> I have to follow answers to all of the questions. <laughs> um, well, well, the, the top concern was definitely, was definitely my parents. Okay, so that I've shared about that already. The second concern was, of course, work. Because I have been full-time doing entertainment industry for about, I guess, eight years or nine years already. So full-time um, commercial modeling, full-time TV hosting, full-time everything that you can't cover for. <laughs> so um, that, that was a big challenge of mine, but I, I, I really did get, give myself a one-year deadline. You know, right from the day when I reverted, which was January 6, 2013. Yeah. So January 6, I told myself, first January next year, I'm going to be in a full time job and I'm going to be doing something halal. So it was one full year that I would, you know, adjust myself and I gave myself markers. You know, by Ramadan I was probably wearing my hijab 80% already. You know, it started weekend. I was a weekend hijabi. I see. Yeah, it was a weekend and then it turned into a, a one or two days during the week and then it was, you know, half a day every day before it became mostly every day. So it, it was some markers, and then um, for the food, it was easy, because I was vegetarian, actually, when I um, first reverted. I'm not now, but when I reverted, I was vegetarian. So the whole pork issue was no issue, because mm -hmm. I, I hadn't eaten pork in probably two, three years anyway. Um, alcohol was no issue, that was easy. Um, I was never a smoker, so yeah, everything was, the adjustment part was easy. It, it was just, you know, wearing bigger, longer clothes, basically. And then um, work, um, at that time when I reverted, I was still um, recording uh, Hardy Flavors and also um, uh, Persona for Capital TV and on the Channel 2. So uh, it was, once those contracts ended, I basically didn't search for more TV shows. And um, I was still shooting my um, TV commercials because, you know, I was making heavy doa. I was making doa like every day that, you know, please let me on January 1st, 2014 make my deadline. So please send me, well, please send me lots of finances so I can save up so that, you know, when 1st January hits, if there is no work at all, I can survive for a few months, yeah, and then find my way. And so that's what happened. These contracts came in, there was contract renewal, so I didn't have to expose myself over again, but it would just renew with 100% payment. I was like, whoa, this is good. <laughs> I mean, alhamdulillah, that, you know, that's, my dua was being answered. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, that whole, the whole past year, I was just saving, trying to save as much as I can, save as much as I can, then um, contract renewals were, were just helping so much, so that, you know, by the time I was, you know, I made the switch, the switch. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's exactly what happened. I had some reserve, which I've been using now. So there's some reserve for me, and I haven't had to go back to anything that I felt or I feel is not correct for me to do anymore. So that, that was the big concern, really, the, the work, which I'm still looking for now, but it's okay. I've got something. Um, it's coming. So, um, inshallah, maybe more things will come. We'll see. Okay, uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan ya, dari segi kerjaya bagaimana sebelum ini Aliza merupakan seorang model, seorang uh, pelakon dan juga host di Station TV uh, Jadi setelah dia memeluk Islam, uh, dilemanya di situ bagaimana uh, uh, mata pencarian dia, punca kewangan dia Jadi doa Aliza setelah memeluk Islam ialah uh, dia ada target uh, By the end of the year, di ujung tahun tu uh, dia berdoa dia dah boleh memul, uh, mula pakai hijab sepenuhnya Okay, sebelum tu dia kata 80% saja iaitu kadang-kadang uh, every weekend setiap hujung minggu dia akan pakai tudung dan atau dan dia perbaiki dengan hari-hari uh, biasa tambah satu dua hari dalam seminggu lagi untuk pakai tudung. Okey lama kelamaan uh, dengan kontrak-kontrak yang datang dapat dia menampung uh, untuk menampung uh, kehidupan dia lah selepas dia fully hijab dia uh, terus uh, pakai tudung yang penuh. 
Okey. Um, jadi sekarang uh, Aliza juga belum mempunyai sebarang kerja tetap tapi sedang uh, ada yang akan datanglah. Insya-Allah ada kontrak-kontrak uh, new career contract coming towards you. Ya. Yeah? Okay. Um, so what are the big changes in your life uh, when you have reverted to Islam? Well, I guess like like I said, there there wasn't huge huge changes to the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I had informed already, my dressing just got bigger, bigger. basically because I was wearing a hat. I was fully covered anyway. That was just what I was comfortable in. Um, you know what I was eating. Well, I started eating meat again. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, it's just. I guess the big change was the big changes were positive changes. No, it wasn't like boring changes. But I mean, the, the most beautiful changes, of course, now I have brothers and sisters all over the world, whereas I'm an only child, you know. So now it's like brothers and sisters all over the world saying hi to me, especially through Facebook, you know, people from um, Jerusalem, you know, I see yeah, um, <laughs> people from back home in America saying hi to me, you know, people from Sri Lanka, I'm like, who are these people? But it's great, hi! <laughs> you know, and so I, I think I'm a part of this big, beautiful family now, and I'm very grateful because, um, I don't know, I just feel very welcomed, very much welcomed. When, you know, when, when I guess when I first reverted, I did have a small concern. It wasn't a big concern, but it was a small concern as in, you know, how are people going to take me now? Because mm -hmm. you know, people are used to seeing me as Eliza, the model, or whatever it is. And uh, by the way, I never thought of myself as so called celebrity as a celebrity. <laughs> it was just more of my job. It's just my job. Someone has to do it at that time. You know? Someone has to do it, I can do it, and I do it. That's just my income. You know, but people are used to go, Eliza, the TV host, Eliza's making an appearance. But it, it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't it for me. In my head, it wasn't the way that people see it. Um, so, but I did worry, you know, people still going to accept me. But um, I guess what I realized is that the people who really love me will accept me, who, what, however I am. You know, the, the friends who um, were unsure of how to react, you know, they would just kind of like my photo every once in a while. So I know that they're liking, I know that they're seeing. They might not say anything, but just by liking, I know that it, they accept it in their own way. And then others will just say hi, but they will not mention anything, so I know that they accept it in their own way as well. And then others will be like, my, my ex-roommate, who's a French model, Hadi, she's like, Lisa, oh, all your hijabs are so cute. It suits you so much. So then there's others that, like, outwardly, you know, very much support me. And so, so it, it's, it's the changes, I guess, have been more positive than the worry. And uh, what about your social lifestyle? I mean, it was different before your social surrounding and environment, or is it not many? Also, different? also interesting because even though it's it's strange, people are like, oh, these are you on TV, but look, when I'm on TV, I talk to a machine. I don't talk to people. I talk to a machine. That's it. When I'm talking to all of you, I'm talking to all of you. I'm not talking like individually. When I'm talking individually, I, I'm pretty much quiet. Because I'm, what do I say now? I get a little bit overwhelmed, but I'm okay with crowds and I'm okay with talking to the camera. So what I'm leading to is that I'm, I'm kind of a reserved person. I'm talkative when I'm, it's a subject that I like, but I'm kind of reserved. I, I don't go out much. I'm not the, you know, going out and hanging out type. So it wasn't as though, you know, oh, I went from partying all the time, going to events all the time to not. It wasn't like that. It was just a continuation. It, you know, because I, I, but I, actually, I go out more now because I go to classes. I go out a lot more now because I'm, you know, going to, you know, talk to some sisters or because I volunteer for uh, reverts now or if I'm going to my classes two or three times a week. So I go out a lot more now, actually. But um, I don't do that. You know, my friends now are so supportive. And, it's 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 different because I'm I'm usually very much on the stay at home. I don't, I don't venture out to and this sounds bad. I don't venture out to meet new friends just because I enjoy my my old friends. But now I do, you know, because I, I really do feel like this is a big new family that I need to go and meet. <laughs> so are you still in touch with your 
friends before? Sure, sure. I, I'm still in touch with most of them. Um, you know, in their own way, they'll they'll kind of come and say hi to me because uh -huh. I do kind of feel nervous going. Hi, oh, I'm a Muslim now. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the ones in America and the ones that I know have been grew up with me as very strong Christians. It's hard for me to be like, hey, guess what? <laughs> but um, in their own way, they'll be like. <laughs> One of my best friends since I was 17. And then, you know, he, he, he in his own way, he, he wrote to me, Aliza, so. <laughs> Nothing so, so you. <laughs> so, we, we, you know, it's in their own way, you know. So it, it's, it's been very sweet, actually, that they don't be like, what are you doing? What do you mean? What do you think you are now? You know, they, they haven't. None of them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just like, okay, so she's just, that's just what she is now. And it's okay. Okay, uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan dari segi pergaulan ni dengan kawan-kawan yang lama masih diteruskan uh, hubungan itu cuma mungkin uh, tidak terus terang lah kawannya uh, ada like di Facebook dan say hi jadi Aliza rasa itu masih meneruskan silaturahim dengan kawan-kawan uh, yang bukan Islam dan uh, penerimaan mereka juga nampak baik uh, tanya khabar tentang Aliza dan Aliza pun memberitahu dia telah memeluk Islam dan mereka nampak Uh, boleh terima lah dengan perubahan dari uh, dari pihak Aliza. Okay, and uh, what about your view uh, towards the Muslim before and after you revert to Islam? Um, as I mentioned before, I have no view of the Muslims actually, not good, not bad, just people. Mm -hmm. That 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 was all I knew about Muslims. I, I didn't know that Islam came from the same roots as Christianity. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, I only knew about Judaism and Christianity. That's it. Um, so, so the, I mean, I didn't notice Muslims even before I was Muslim. I didn't notice. I really just didn't notice. Even like mosques. I, when I was, where I was living in Bangkok, there's actually a mosque behind where I was staying. But I didn't notice until I went back as a Muslim. I was like, wow, it's been there. has this mosque always been there? Yeah. It must have. But I just didn't, I just didn't notice. You know, it wasn't in my level of consciousness. Or if I, if I saw like a Muslim lady, I'm just like, okay, she has a nice scar. Okay, that's it. That's it yeah. There was nothing more than that. There's no bad feelings, no good feelings. It's just like, it just is. <laughs> so now it's like very much conscious. Like, it's a Muslim sister. I should go say some to her. <laughs> so it's, it's more, and if I see a mosque, it's like, okay, take note, there's a mosque that I can go pray here or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, the level of consciousness is different. And, and of course, I become more aware of the different types of Muslims. And when I say, I mean, we're all Muslim, we're all, we all live in, believe in Allah, we all, you know, follow our deen. But there are different types of Muslims, you know what I mean? Different types of, you know, different levels of knowledge. Everyone's following at a different pace. You know, some people have different varieties of opinions. But it's okay, it's not enough to divide the Ummah, which it shouldn't. You know, so you can have some variety a little bit. You know, as long as we can agree to disagree, but still love Allah together. You know, that, that's the way I view it. You know, we shouldn't, we should we, we, all the Muslims should not be fighting. We should, it's, it's, we're all one family. It's like siblings, you know, siblings can fight. Siblings can have some differences of opinion sometimes, but in the end, we all love Allah. Mm -hmm. So this is the way that I see the Muslims now. There's varieties, but we, we're all going towards the same way. Uh, what about the, the, the treatment of your Muslim friend towards you? Um, you feel happy about that? Of course, they, uh, of course they've all been very, very nice, very and, uh, well welcoming. I mean, once someone, even strangers, even once they know that you know I'm just reverted in the past year, I mean I get the jobs coming to me, okay. yes, gifts or whatever it is, just to show that you know you're doing the right thing, you're on the right track, keep going. Some encouragement and support and the love have just it's just been incredible. Like when, I don't know if any of you read my reversion story that was posted on my Facebook, but it was just crazy. I thought, okay, I've told my dad, my dad has accepted me, then now I just need to tell the world, or at least my Facebook friends, so then they're not like, how come she's wearing a headscarf all of a sudden? I just thought, okay, I'll just write my story and I'll just post it there and whoever wants to read it can read it. You know, in three weeks, 50,000 views. I was like, where, what? What happened? <laughs> and then after that, Eddie from the the, the Dean show, hi, hi Eddie, you're 
<laughs> he's a very nice brother, by the way. Very fun to talk to. I was like, whoa, how'd that happen? And then all these other things happened. And it was just like, I mean, why? Someone asked me, Aliza, how come you're getting so much attention? I said, I don't know. <laughs> you're a celebrity. <laughs> no, but I mean, out of all of the reversions, I mean, I mean, Alhamdulillah, I accept it. If, if Allah wants me to speak in some way, because I like to talk. <laughs> I mean, if, if he can help, you know, if he can use me in some way, if I have some skill and he sees that I can do it, so I've figured out writing and talking, I can do. So <laughs> if, if that is something that I can do for Allah, I happily do it. I happily do it. Um, again, if anything benefits me tonight, it's from Allah. If I say something ridiculous, it's from me, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, one interesting question is uh, about the hijab journey. Can you tell us about that? Well, um, for me, um, again, I had, I, I was, I didn't have an opinion of the hijab. I just thought it just is. Again, it just is. A Muslim lady wears a hijab. That's it. Um, once I found out that it was a command, I was like, okay, then I have to wear a hijab. No questions asked. But again, this is part of the whole revert syndrome. It's like you know something is a command, you just kind of do it. Whether it's in your heart yet or not, at that time it wasn't really in my heart yet, not yet. Now it is. At that time, even, you know, even World Hijab Day, um, a month and a half ago, a month ago, a month, month and a half ago, at that event I also said, actually the hijab is not quite in my heart yet, but now it is. Just a month ago, yeah? Now it is. But since I know that I knew that it was a command and something that I have to do, and I really feel that I have to do, I thought, okay, well then I'll make steps. That's why I became part-time first, because I was like, hmm, how am I gonna, I was still in the mode of, how am I gonna find my own style? You know, because it's just those remnants of, you know, me being a model. Because everyone is telling me, you know, there's no particular style that you have to wear. You can wear just as long as you meet the requirements of showing your face and hands only, and you know, covering your body, not showing body shape, and the fabric that you wear is not transparent. Then go ahead and wear whatever you want. I was like, all right. It's like dressing all over. It, this is the most fun part for a girl. I, I don't, I don't know about all of you, but this was the most fun part for me. You know, dressing all over again, learning how to dress all over again. So, I, um, so the, the hijab went on, not so princely at first. It was just fun. <laughs> but you know, I, I did. Um, I, I went on YouTube and I looked at a lot of videos. I tried a lot of things and, you know, there was some interesting styles and I put it on and I was like, whoa, my head is so big. And then other ones, I was like, whoa, my head is so small. <laughs> so you tried all types of uh, hijab all styling. Types, yeah. all types. Mm -hmm. until, until I kind of de developed this. Because I feel like my face shape is kind of strange. So I, I put on the, the round ones, like kind of, kind of like what you have, and I was like, my face is strange. So I said, okay, scratch that one. Then I put the, the one that looks like a turban with the with the point here. And I was like, my face looks way too skinny. So I was just kind of shifting, shifting, and I was like, oh, okay. So it came, became like this, and I was like, oh, all right, that looks all right. <laughs> that looks all right. So okay, first step's done. Inner is done. So how am I going to do the outside? So I tried a few ways, and then I came, well, now I do this all, all the time. If you're on my Facebook, this is what I look like most of the time now. But now people are like, can you do a tutorial for us? And I can't. Why? It's because I put it on and I start twisting, twisting, and I put a pin here and I twist, 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 and it never looks the same. It just, it just becomes. And it, it's never this, it just turns out. So I, I'm sorry, I, I can't teach you, but you can just twist, twist it and just pin it. I don't know how to explain. But it just, it just happens. <laughs> Okay, uh, jadi uh, Aliza berkongsi cerita tentang bagaimana pengalaman dia mula memakai hijab uh, di mana Aliza mula-mula uh, memakai dengan sebab ia ialah suruhan agama uh, belum masuk dalam ke dalam hati lagi uh, keikhlasan untuk memakai hijab tapi dia pakai je sebab dia nak jadi muslim yang sempurna cita-citanya di awal uh, memeluk Islam uh, jadi lama kelamaan dan sekarang Aliza kata keikhlasan sudah datang dan dia menceritakan bagaimana dia tengok di YouTube cara-cara untuk pakai hijab, nak menjimit macam mana, nak tudung yang sesuai macam mana dan sebagainya lah. Jadi dia rasa seronok uh, tentang nak style kan, uh, nak menggayakan uh, pakaian dan juga uh, tudung sebagai seorang muslimah. Okay, and um, uh, how has Islam enriched your life compared to uh, your previous life? 
<laughs> well, um, enriched. Yes, it, it has enriched and it has added a lot. Um, simply because of the structure, I think, again. Um, because I was a bookworm, I think, I always have this, things need to be orderly, you know? Things have to be categorized and there has to be a way to do it and there has to be steps to doing things. So I always thought, wow, my life is so free. It's too free for, for me. This is just my own thinking, you know? This is just too free. And you know, you, you just can, I was, can you really just do anything? Because if you can just do anything, then people can just do anything and it'd be okay. But obviously it's not, you can't just do anything. So what's the structure? You know, so, so this is just my thing, okay? So when, when I found Islam and, and I found out that it's a complete way of living, I mean, other, other religions do claim that it's a complete way of living and it's a lifestyle, but for me, even those lifestyles were too free. I don't know, I like the rules and regulations. They make sense to me. You know, it makes sense to me why a woman has to wear a hijab to protect herself and also not only to protect herself, but to let the, what's inside here shine. That makes sense to me. You know, it makes sense to me that a person or a man looks at you and not at your body shape or your hair first, but he sees that, wow, this person is decently dressed. They're well dressed. They're respecting themselves, so I better respect them. I, it makes sense to me. You know, and then even um, if we go into theology, um, the system of uh, justice makes sense to me, you know, how people have to work towards, you know, collecting good deeds to cancel out bad deeds. It makes sense to me. And it makes sense to me that only the pure, or, you know, you get, of course, all the believers get to go to Jamma, but you, you don't know if you're the first wave or the last wave, but you have to do this purification first, right? Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me that you have to be purified. It makes sense to me that you have to be pure to go to Jamma. You know, it, it makes sense. So a lot of the things make sense and it's orderly and you know, there's always um, an answer to a life question. Whatever issue that you're going, there's always an answer to it and uh, an answer that's practical mm -hmm. and makes sense. So, so for, for me, it's just a very wise and, and yeah, very wise religion. Uh, jadi uh, Aliza mendapati uh, bagaimana Islam memperkayakan kehidupan kerana Islam ini meliputi seluruh aspek kehidupan daripada bangun pagi hingga tidur. Jadi uh, Aliza, Aliza mengatakan bagaimana struktur yang ada dalam Islam yang mempunyai jawapan kepada semua persoalan yang tentang kehidupan. Okay. Uh, jadi ada sedikit pengumuman daripada jaringan siswa Zaman Malaysia, JASA yang telah mengedarkan tabung aktiviti JASA eh, kutipan derma uh, yang telah diedarkan lah di dalam Dewan. Okay. Um, kita teruskan. Uh, in what ways do you think that the Holy Quran has impact on your life? Um, well, um, the translation of the Quran, perhaps because yeah. I'm, the Iqra classes are still on the way. <laughs> Arabic is not easy to, to learn <laughs> and it's not easy to remember. But I, I do love hearing the Quran being recited. I think it's the most beautiful thing. I mean, you know, it's it is the most beautiful thing, it's the word of Allah. So, um, but the, the translation of the Quran, of the verses that I know, definitely, I would say they ground me. They remind me of a lot of things, especially, you know, of course the first um, surah that you're going to learn is Al-Fatiha, when you learn to um, salah. And one interesting thing that, that, that my, my Ustaz actually told me about reverse is that, you know, born Muslims, you will learn to recite the Quran first and then you learn the definition later. But for the reverse, we learn the definition first and learn how to recite later. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the, the definition and the meaning went into my heart first. Mm -hmm. So when, when I recite Fatiha, it's such a grounding experience for me. You know, when, when I get to the part where, you know, when I remember Allah gives me his assistance, that's that makes me very comforted. And when I'm asking for Allah to keep me on the straight path, I'm more comforted, you know? So it's not only half of it is me asking Allah to help me and the other half is asking Allah to keep me in a way that he's pleased with me. So it's like a comprehensive surah, you know? So it, it's a very grounding surah for me. And all the short, you know, all the little short surahs that usually children 
<laughs> memorize first. I know those too. Those are the ones that I memorize first too. And and all those are very meaningful as well. You know, everything in the Quran you can apply to your life. There, there's some way for you to apply to your life. So if if you know the meaning and you can start thinking about what what it really says about each and every one of our lives, just because it was written, you know, recorded many thousand years ago, doesn't mean that it doesn't apply today. So if you can make it modern and apply to yourself, man, it really goes into your heart. Uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan bagaimana uh, Al-Quran uh, memberi kesan kepada kehidupan Aliza uh, Di mana Ustaz dia memberitahu uh, bagi mereka-mereka yang memang lahir Islam Kita akan belajar mengaji Quran dulu Kemudian baru belajar tafsir Tapi bagi mereka-mereka yang baru nak memeluk Islam Mereka akan belajar tafsir dulu untuk mengenal Islam Dan kemudian baru belajar mengaji okay? Jadi uh, cara ini di mana Aliza mem- uh, mempelajari tafsir terlebih dahulu Dan dia uh, surah yang pertama ialah surah Al-Fatihah di mana uh, dalam surah itu ada uh, tulis uh, Allah uh, memohon Allah memberi jalan yang lurus okay? Jadi uh, itu, itu cukup terkesan kepada Aliza Di mana dia mendapati bahawa begitu indah terjemahan uh, surah Al-Fatihah Dan dia juga turut mempelajari surah-surah yang lain lah Dan masih sedang belajar ikhraq lagi okay? uh, Dan uh, Aliza mendapati bahawa Al-Quran memang uh, memenuhi segala aspek kehidupan dan dapat menjawab seluruh uh, segala persoalan yang ada dalam minda Aliza. Okay, uh, what are some beautiful aspects uh, that you like about Islam that you think uh, you cannot find in your uh, previous religion, Christianity? Mm. Well, I think I've mentioned it before. It's really the structure that I that I admire the most. But also, um, also I mentioned this before. It's a it's a family unit. No, because even I mean, I, not to put down Christianity at all, because that's where I came from. Christianity, I love Christianity because it was because of Christianity that I found Islam. So, you know, there's no way that I can't, that I'm not going to love my Christian brothers and sisters. I love them. You know, I love my Christian brothers and sisters, my Jewish, you know, brothers and sisters who are all from the same group, and also my brothers and sisters in humanity. I love all of them. But what Islam has that I felt that I was missing was one structure to family. Like literally family. I mean, uh, most Muslims have rights upon each other. One of them is the salam. You know, when you see another Muslim, you're supposed to say salam and boom, and they're supposed to return the salam back. I think that's beautiful. That's, that's a beautiful thing. And that shows how much detail this religion goes into just you know keeping the ummah together. Just the salam. You're obligated. That's beautiful. You know, so so this whole sense of family is something that I very much appreciate. Yeah, um, being an only child, especially. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's it's something that no matter what race you are, no matter in what country you are in, all of us are united as a family. And I mean, more so than other religions, really. They, they might they might do the same, but not as an obligation like it is here. Uh, antara yang menarik uh, Aliza tentang Islam uh, ialah hubungan persaudaraan sesama Islam di mana bila kita bertemu dengan saudara sesama Islam kita menyam, uh, memberi salam assalamualaikum dan uh, hubungan kekeluargaan hubungan uh, kasih sayang antara kawan dan rakan ya yeah, uh, jadi itu antara aspek yang Aliza rasa begitu terkesanlah dengan uh, agama Islam uh, berbanding agama Kristian yang uh, dialogi sebelumnya lah uh, tapi wala bagaimanapun Aliza tetap menyatakan bahawa uh, tak banyak perbezaan sebab uh, bagi, uh, agama Kristian juga menurutnya berapa baik sama insan dan sebagainya lah ada aspek-aspek baik uh, yang diteruskan sehingga sekarang Okay, uh, so what is your hope now as a Muslimah? I think my hope is probably the same as all Muslims is just do my best to get as close to Allah as possible and do my best to please him as much as possible um, in the way that I live my life. Um, and for me, um, I think, in my opinion, that means learning more. Um, keep going to classes, being diligent in your studies, not stopping them uh, just because you think, oh, I'm at this level already, maybe I can just chill out for a while. No. You're always in need of reminders and classes, no matter what level of knowledge you're at. And, and I think that is really the best way to, you know, learn how to live your life in the best way. Um, I guess my hope is just, just that, 
that I won't lose my fire for learning because I love learning. Um, it really brings me closer not only to Allah but to my brothers and sisters when I see them in class. So in a way, it's, it helps me to build community. Um, yeah, that, it's just simply that. It's just simply that. Just do whatever I can to get close to Allah and do whatever I can to <laughs> stay away from sin and temptation, which is that there's a lot out there now. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, uh, jadi harapan uh, Aliza sebagai seorang muslimah uh, ialah supaya dia dapat terus mendekatkan diri kepada uh, Allah, mendekatkan diri kepada agama yang sentiasa memperbaiki diri sebagai seorang muslimah. Okay. Uh, jadi uh, kita akan buka uh, kepada para hadirin hadirat untuk uh, bertanya sebarang soalan kepada Aliza. So now we are opening the session to the audience to ask any questions to you. So ada apa-apa soalan? Do Aliza Kim. I know this is the part where it like becomes really quiet because all the Malaysians are very shy. <laughs> and this is the part where it's like you know, someone who likes to talk will start filling in empty space. <laughs> so please ask me some questions so at least I have something to talk about. <laughs> Jadi bermulanya Aliza ke Malaysia ialah untuk uh, penggambaran iklan ya, iklan TV dan uh, sebelum ni dia tak ambil tahu langsung lah pasal Malaysia jadi bila dia telah berada di Malaysia ber, uh, dia mendapati oh orang Malaysia boleh cakap ini juga dan dia selesa berada di Malaysia dan uh, Alhamdulillah sekarang Aliza dah 6 tahun berada di Malaysia uh, but can you speak Malay now? Unfortunately no, no. <laughs> Any intention to learn Malay language or? There is an intention I don't know when that intention will be met But there is an intention Okay Ada niat untuk mempelajari bahasa Malay Bahasa Melayu, bahasa Malaysia Tapi belum bermula lagi lah Okay uh, Jadi ada soalan lagi? Soalan lain untuk Ali Zaki? Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum so, um, one thing I'm quite curious in your search for meaning and purpose of life, I understand you did a lot of search for meaning and what a lot of uh, major religions. So, I was just wondering what made you choose Islam? Do you feel this is the right one? Um. Well, for, first and foremost, um, whatever religion it would be, it would always be a religion of the book because I love God. I grew up with God, I love God with all of my heart, so whatever religion it would be, it would have to be a religion with God in it. So to me, it, was, it, it would only boil down to Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. Yeah? And at that time, when I was still searching, I didn't know anything about Islam. I knew a bit about Judaism, you know, um, just because of the Christian roots, and um, I had some Jewish friends back home in, in Boston, so I knew a bit, um, and I didn't, I didn't feel like that was what I wanted, yeah? 
So um, when my friend, like I, I mentioned earlier, when my friend invited me to learn a bit more about Islam, I thought, well, you know, I'm on this big search. I'm on this big search and, you know, if it's got the same roots as Christianity, which I thought that I was on the way to search for the one pure church, you know, if we're from the same roots, then maybe Islam has some clues for me. Well, little did I know that those clues became answers. Yeah, so it was it was really more like that. That you know, in my view, Islam is not so different than Christianity. Yes, there are some fundamental differences. There are, but not so different. Our stories are so similar. Many our value of our the values are so similar. You know, so it was not hard really for me to adjust myself and to adjust my thinking. You know, there, there, there are um, Christians that would question me, how can you just leave the theology of um, Jesus Christ? Well, um, as I mentioned before, when, when I asked myself, could, a, could Allah, could, could God do whatever he wants? If he wants to send another messenger, could he do that? Just the thought of could. Of course, yeah. he's God, he can do anything he wants. You know, if, if Jesus, you know, going into theology again. Um, if Jesus, if my issue was Jesus talking as a baby. I was like, how can a baby talk? But God can make a baby talk. Why not? If God can make a man out of clay, He can make a baby talk. No problem. So it was, it was these just these initial hurdles that adjusted my thinking. And once I could adjust just those two things, only only um, Prophet Isa and Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Those were just my two hurdles. All the other stories were so similar to me, I was like, okay, check, fine. That's all. <laughs> okay, I hope that answers your question, yeah? Okay. Uh, ada soalan lain? Yeah, silakan. Alaikum salam. Mm-hmm. 
I, I kind of knew the movements because someone taught me, still kind of like doing it and it's like, wait, did I do that yet? I better do it again. <laughs> no, it was still like that and, and a, a kind sister was, just came to me and she was like, don't worry, just start with Alhamdulillah and when you end the movement, just, no, Bismillah and when you finish, Alhamdulillah. So I just did that, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but I mean, I did my level best. And then um, what happened next was that I spoke to my ustaz and he said, you know, you can learn Al-Fatiha in seven days. There's seven parts. You learn it in seven days. Each day you do one part. The second day you do first part and second part. So that's what I did. Of course, the last part took me a few more days than just one day each part. But um, yeah, in Al-Fatiha, it was about two weeks I got Al-Fatiha. Um, and then some, some people helped me with the pronunciation. So it was step by step. but. You know, I, I did the motions first and I thought it was beautiful. And I tell you, I thought so a lot at that time, I thought it was the most, it was like my happy time. I was like, I was so happy. I was like, I don't know why people are so dissatisfied with coming to prayer. I'm so happy. Yay! I'm so happy praying. I was the happiest person for three months, three full months. I was just refreshed. I was happy. I was excited. My TV producer came out. What's wrong with you, Lisa? How come you're so happy? <laughs> I didn't tell her yet at that time. I was just happy all the time. And I tell you, most people are like this. We're just happy and excited all the time for a period of time. And then, as we know, reverts will then get tested for our sincerity. But even that, alhamdulillah, it was just, it was a good experience as well because now I feel so close to Allah. And so many things have, you know, happened to me that I know for sure for sure that he is there and I know for sure, for sure that he answers my doa. It is so apparent. So, you know, I mean, so what? It's still my happy hour. It's maybe not as exciting as it was <laughs> in the beginning, the but ones. now it's just, you know, now it's like my quiet time. Whatever it is, whatever issue it is, as soon as I so up, it's better. Okay, uh, jadi Aliza menceritakan bagaimana seronoknya dia setiap kali menunaikan solat Di mana Aliza mendapati itulah masanya untuk dia mendekatkan diri dan berhubung dengan Allah SWT Dan uh, pada awalnya Aliza cuma perform uh, the movement, uh, rukuh, sujud dan sebagainya uh, Bacaan masa itu tak, tak pasti lagi lah Kemudian uh, ustaz dia mengajar, uh, mulakan dengan Al-Fatihah dalam masa tujuh hari Hari pertama ayat pertama dan Al-Fatihah, hari kedua ayat pertama dan kedua dan seterusnya Sampai seminggu uh, Aliza dah dapat lah tempat tihak dan uh, itulah permulaannya uh, Aliza menunaikan solat dan uh, ini lah okay. uh, ada soalan lain?
question. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm not a counselor, definitely, and it's not like I've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> but, you know, for, for many reverts, it's, it's really the family that's the big test, you know? And um, I can't say that I know firsthand how it is to handle a family that's being rough to you, because my family was so lovely, and you, as you said, they're, it, my path was made quite smooth in that way. I was tested in a totally, completely different way, but the family part was smooth. But many of my reverts, my revert friends, do have a lot of issue with um, family. And um, what we are usually reminded of is that you know once you become Muslim, you have to work much harder, a lot harder to keep in touch with your family, a lot harder to take care of your family, especially your mother. Because, you know, parents are parents. Parents, they will love you for whatever you are, but they get scared too. You know, once once they feel like, oh, my little boy or my little girl is slipping away, it's scary for them, mm -hmm. you know? It's scary for them to not understand and not know. And I would imagine that it's the same with your friend. Because it doesn't sound like his parents are being like, no, don't do it. Or, you know, cut you off right away. No, it just seems like, what are you doing? So maybe that's the clue. Maybe they want to know what is it that you're learning. And it, for, for, for me, actually, from my experience, is that when I started telling my mother a little bit, I started with what I thought she would want to know first. You know, I told her, I didn't tell her theology. I told her how Islam regards women, how Islam respects women, how a Muslim man will treat his wife, things that I thought that my mother would want to know. <coughs> so in his case, I can't give specific guidance because I'm, 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 you know, I'm not an imam. But what, what I could suggest is that he explained to them some of the things that he's learning. He doesn't have to tell them yet that he's reverted, but maybe he can start just to, hey, you know what I learned in class today? And he can make it very soft. Doesn't mean like, Islam says this, Islam says No, you can just be very soft. Hey, in class, you know, today I learned that, you know, we're, whatever we do, we have to keep our family ties. Maybe that's what they want to hear. You know, Muslims are supposed to keep the kin and kin, yeah? You don't break family ties. You know, so so things like this, things that he knows his mother and his father best. You know, as a revert, you know your mother and father best. You know the best way to talk to them. So if you can ease their minds first, then that would be good. Even with my father, I did the same thing with the date. I took him on the father daughter date because I knew that he'd be like, what's going on with her? Is she still my daughter? So I I I, I knew what my parents wanted. And I'm sure that he, he loves his parents and he's very close to them. He knows what they would want as an ease of mind as well. So maybe just that. You know, just start with that first. So it's how you tackle the parents, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't want to say you handle them, but it is in a way, because it is a huge life change. You're changing completely almost, you know. So. If those people who love you today will love you, but they want to know that you're still the same person that they've always loved. Mm -hmm. And once you can prove that to them, usually it's much smoother after that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I have a group, Dr. Aliza Kim. I got something. Right now, the big issue is how long can come. <laughs> so, 
So I've, I've actually um, um, chosen a path for myself, and that's really going back to my old love, which is writing. I published my first um, paper when I was 18 years old in America, and that paper is still being used in colleges today in English um, uh, classes. So I know that I have a gift of writing. So I've gone back to writing, and I'm now writing um, uh, religiously influenced books. Um, so, so that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing for the next five or so years. But really, the, the big the big goal really is just to benefit the Ummah in some way. Whatever that is, whatever skill I have is just to benefit the Ummah in some way. So right now, I can write and I can talk a bit. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. So we, we all kind of do what we can. Since, you know, I, I, I've had this kind of life and I've had this kind of exposure and if I can use it in some way, in a positive way, then, then you know, that's what I want to do. Um, but for the next five years, definitely, I want to get more grounded in religion. I want to learn how to recite the Quran. I want to learn more about um, theology of Islam, you know. Probably at some point I want to get married, all this kind of thing, good stuff, you know. So, in terms of... Um, Doing da'wah with my close ones, of course. It's almost an obligation. But how do you do it? And the realization that perhaps they will not enter Islam, but you still are obligated. You know? Um, only Allah knows whose heart is going to change and whose heart is going to be softened. But at least, you know, my goal, I, I, I guess you could say that I do some like da'wah already, but my goal is not so much to convince, but my goal is just to make people have a positive outlook about Islam. You know, just to change some misconceptions that, you know, Islam is not scary. Muslims are not scary, they're not crazy people. You know, we're, we can all still get along and in that way let people think of or see Islam and the Muslims in a more positive light. That's more of what more like brand awareness, you know? <laughs> so that's more of what my kind of that would be like, you know? But definitely on my parents, it's, it's something that I'm obligated to do and I want to do. They need, even, even if it's not, if you don't want to call it Dawa, they need to know more about their daughter. What's going on with Elisa, their daughter now? That's something that's very important. Great. Um, so, yes, again. Ramadan, I did the six days of Shawal, and then I started fasting Monday and Thursday again. 
until I had low blood pressure, then I had to stop. <laughs> so that's how much I love fasting after that. So um, from, from what I thought was going to be very difficult, Allah made it so easy. You know, he, he told me to do the training first, so I knew that I could. <laughs> okay. uh, so I let's try again. Let's see it again.
gorgeous celebrity tonight. Uh, Alisa here. Okay. That's it. Uh, what a wonderful, amazing, and energetic uh, sharing moment from Alisa here. Uh, on how she get attracted to Islam. Throughout this talk, I can see uh, I I find myself very pleased with what you have shared uh, just now, and uh, I can see how excited uh, she is to be a Muslim. Is it? Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> very excited. Uh, her face. Okay. So. Uh, Thank you very much uh, to all of you for being here tonight uh, from the beginning until now. Uh, actually, I am uh, very challenged when uh, the moderator and the panelists uh, speak in English and uh, all the uh, audience uh, come up with questions in English. So, I am trying to speak in English. Can I? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, Thank you for your participation. Uh, hope uh, all of you can join us in the next amazing program uh, organized by JASA, the United States of Malaysia, uh, with uh, Bani Community and Nisa uh, Sata. Uh, with that, I thank you. Okay, let's see. Thank you. 